Hey with YouTube, you're looking fierce well today. My name's Alan, and today I want to talk about something that I've talked about quite a lot on the channel. Scriptable objects, scriptable object and event system. But scriptable objects can If you've been on this channel before, you know I praise an event system. Always going on about how great it is and how much I want to how much I like using it and, and all that kind of stuff. But I've never actually shown it or really talked about it in detail. So that's what this video is all about. We're gonna talk about it, we're gonna get into it. Yeah, so let's jump in. So what the heck am I talking about when I say scriptable objects event system? Well, it's based on a GDC talk by a guy called Ryan Hippel that I saw many years ago. And to break it down, it's a game architecture pattern that will allow you to build all your systems modularly and remove any kind of coupling or, or dependencies. And how it works from the actual engine's point of view is there's two pieces, two components to the puzzle. First, there's the actual game event, and that is something that is, well, it's an event that happens. And when it happens, you raise the event and basically shout out and tell your project that this event has happened. Then you have a bunch of listeners, and they are listening for a specific event, and they are going to do an action based on that event. And I'm about to show you a bunch of examples of this in my own project. This is a scene I just finished for the asset pack that I'm making, and this is basically just showing off um, our RPG systems for so level XP and attribute scaling. A little spoiler, by the way, because there's a tutorial coming up uh, on this very soon, or a little teaser. So if you like the look at this, subscribe, huh? subscribe, uh, and a little demo. If I have a level up button, when I press up, this increases, and uh, my character stats scale up as well. And this is all done using an event system. And this is a great little example of how event systems are good. So within our canvas, we have this stats container and we have all of these different stats. So these are just texts, um, just containers that contain some text values um, that we play with. It's not that important. But what is important is that how you would normally do this for yourself um, without an event system is that you would need to create some kind of script that you would um, maybe pass all of these values into it and have them all as public uh, variables within the file. Or you would maybe just pass the entire container in and you would get all the children uh, for uh, all the children within the container and you just kind of have to assume that it only has um, stats containers, which is fine. I mean, it works, right? It's fine. Um, but with an event system is that there's absolutely no uh, connection between any of these uh, objects or any other class, everything is completely separate, right? So uh, what is happening in this scene is in our level changes, we have the level up. And then like I said about the, the game object, um, so we have a level change game event and it calls something called a raise method, which is basically just, it's basically shouting out into the world that it's it's done its job, it's finished and it's, it's uh, something has happened. And then in all of these stats containers in our health, we have the game event listener and it's listening for that event. And it's doing something when it hits that event. So in this situation, it's just updating the text, which isn't a, it's not a, not a big, what, what it's doing isn't that important. We can, you can wait for the tutorial on that. Um, but it means that all of these things are just completely separate and I don't have to change anything. Uh, and nothing has any dependency on each other. So I could just easily just duplicate this, uh, this this one. I could go into this, I could, it's set to intelligence right now. Uh, let's set it to health again. I'll press play. It's automatically changed to health and it's scaling up automatically. Just nothing I had to do. There's no, no um, dependency, I didn't have to you know, drag this in anywhere or anything like that. So it's just really good. And the reason I'm not doing a full tutorial on this and showing off the code for the game event is because it's really just copied straight from that GDC talk that I was talking about earlier. So it's kind of plagiarized. So that's why I don't really feel comfortable doing a tutorial. I don't think it's necessary. If you want to copy this, watch that talk. I highly recommend it. It's a great talk. Um, just to even see if it's something that you want to do. So, so if you want to do this, and there's other tutorials out there as well, so you don't you don't need me um, to get this done, I don't think. And uh, that's not all. This scene here is from the AI video that I did just a wee while back. And this is an example of just a much more kind of complex scene and 
kind of what events do here. So uh, within this scene, uh, there is one particular event that is kind of prevalent everywhere. So, and that is the focus character event. So, uh, basically what the focus character event is, is when a new turn begins, uh, we get the next character on the list and who's next. And we raise an event and we tell basically all of the different systems who the new character is. And those systems, for example, are our Pathfinder controller. Uh, we have the tone based, uh, we have the character event manager, and we have the tone based manager. We also have the canvas UI uh, to update the, the little image down here. And yeah, probably a couple of other things that I'm forgetting about, but it's, it's everywhere. This event is everywhere. And what's cool is that all these systems, none of these systems are reliant on each other or reliant on a character existing or anything like that. So for example, like if I press play here, uh, you know, everything is working fine, right? If I go to my portrait and just say, do you know what, I don't want a UI, I want to disable UI, boom, I can just disable it. And everything still works completely fine. As expected. And that's really cool, I think. I think that's really cool. Yeah, I don't know how I book managed to break my buttons. <laughs> but they're, yeah, they're booked. Um, I must have deleted the image by accident when I started the new project. Anyway, uh, yeah, the only downside, in my opinion, to these event systems is organization. Organization is kind of tricky, and this project is a great example of how maybe it's things can get out of hand. Because what I did was I just um, put kind of events everywhere and I didn't really care where they went and listeners everywhere. So like this character event manager has like six different event listeners attached to it. Probably not necessary. Um, I think what I'm going to try to do uh, for the new project is have like listener objects that just kind of just holds all the listeners in place. So if I need to find where they are, I can, and it's not a big deal. Um, for example, like I'd have one focus character listener, and then I would have like my Pathfinder controller, and then I'd have my event manager, my tone base manager, and my uh, portrait, right? And then I would call whatever functions it is that they need to call. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that here. Set waste your time by setting it up here. But that's maybe something like this is probably better than um, what I've done. So that's just kind of something to keep in mind. Um, another downside is that sometimes you can end up with these kind of chain of, event, chain of events and if something goes wrong, uh, it's kind of hard to figure out what goes wrong. It's hard to go backwards. So, uh, for example, um, the focus character event raises and if I go to my character event manager, this is one of the methods that gets called from that event. And let's just say like this character that's getting passed to it has some bad data inside of it, right? How would I figure out where that bad data is coming from if I haven't worked on this project in a couple of weeks or a couple of months, right? Normally, if a method's being called from somewhere, you can just click on this references button here and it'll tell you where it's being called from. You know, for, if I scroll up, for example, like it would look something like this. Uh, or, you know, I could right click on it I could go to find all, go to implement, or go to find all references, um, and my references are just, are just there is none, right? Uh, or I could maybe I could like click on it. I could do like a Control Shift F, and I could find all references that way. Um, but no, it's just a bunch of methods with the same name. There's nothing being called. So something to keep in mind. Um, it can be kind of tricky. So uh, good. Naming conventions, good good naming conventions and uh, hierarchy, good hierarchy organization is very important for these systems. And I haven't done it here, it was my first time doing it and the scene got a little bit overcomplicated. Uh, but going forward is definitely something that I want to keep in mind and try to keep everything as clean as possible. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of the end of the demo. And that's it. That's everything I wanted to talk about today. Uh, I know this was pretty 
low effort. <laughs> but yeah, I hope some people found it interesting or, or useful in some way. Uh, I'm trying to find a balance where I can upload more videos, but not lose too much quality. So I'm trying to like figure it out and I'm just kind of playing around with ideas and trying to figure things out. So so give me some feedback down below um, if this was any good or if you found it interesting at all. And the only other thing I wanted to say was 1,000 subscribers. Woo! Woo, 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 woo! We did it. <laughs> uh, thanks so much, guys. Like I, I kind of gave myself a little... Uh, a little like mini goal in my head to say like I wanted to try and hit 1,000 subscribers this year and you know we'll have it through the year and it's there so I'm just like really happy about that and yeah feel really good about it so yeah thank you thank you so much um that's all I wanted to say uh see you next time next there is a tutorial coming I'm on the Apogee systems so if you're interested in that and um, keep an eye out uh yeah cheers thank you bye see you guys